Hello, I'm Craig McCann and I'm here today on behalf of TheInvestorsAdvocate.com to explain to you why I think you should not buy a leveraged and inverse ETF. An exchange traded fund or ETF is similar to a mutual fund, but unlike a mutual fund, ETFs are listed on an exchange and trade at varying prices throughout the day like a share of stock. They were first introduced in 1993 and had grown to approximately one and a half trillion dollars as of 2012. Leveraged and inverse ETFs use derivatives to magnify gains and losses and to expose investors to esoteric asset classes like volatility. Leveraged and inverse ETFs come in two types. Leveraged ETFs return on a daily basis a multiple of the return to a specified underlying index. For instance, if the index increases by 2%, a two times leveraged ETF will increase 4% in value that day. The second type of leveraged and inverse ETF called an inverse ETF returns on a daily basis the opposite of the return on the index. So if an index increases by 2% one day, the inverse ETF's value will decrease by 2%. There are also what are referred to as inverse leveraged ETFs. These are uh, ETFs that return a multiple of the opposite of the return of the index. So again, if the index increases by 2%, a two times leveraged inverse ETF will return minus 4%. Importantly, these products generate a multiple of their index returns on a daily basis, not over long time periods. They do not deliver their stated objectives for longer than one day, and over longer time periods may actually suffer significant losses relative to what investors would expect given their descriptions. The SEC has warned investors to uh, not hold inverse and leveraged ETFs for longer than short time periods. FINRA has also told brokerage firms that they should not recommend inverse and leveraged ETFs to be held for longer than a short time period. And the NYSC has warned investors and brokers uh, to not hold leveraged and inverse ETFs for longer than a short period of time, and also that investors should be aware of and understand e leveraged and inverse ETFs' extensive use of derivatives. Now I've got a numerical example here that will help you perhaps understand the difference between a leveraged ETF and a traditional margin account. In this simple example, I've got returns each day for five days specified in column A. And so if you had an unleveraged ETF that you start with $100 invested in, and on the first day there's a return of 23%, then that $100 investment grows in value to $123 at the end of the first day. If on the second day the investment loses 20% of its value, that 20% of $123 is $24.60 and the investment at the end of the second day is worth $98.40. On the third day, if there's a 20% positive return on the index, the unlevered ETF is going to be worth $118.08 and so on. The way I've constructed this example, the cumulative return over the five days is essentially zero and the unlevered ETF or traditional securities account, if you will, starts out being worth $100 and ends up being worth $100. In a traditional situation where an investor wants to short the market, I've reported the returns they would have experienced just during this five-day period in column D. So at the end of the first day, when the market has gone up by 23%, the investor starts out with $200 cash and a $100 short position. When the short position goes up in value from $100 to $123, the investor's equity drops to $77. As a result of the increase in their liability, that short ETF 
from $100 to $123. And then each day thereafter, the net value of the account varies with the resulting change in the value of the uh, short position. You can see that the column D values are just the mirror image of the column C values around $100. And at the end of the five days, the sh traditional short described in column D is also worth $100. Now, if we compare that to the result that an investor would experience if instead of shorting the market, they instead invested the account in an uh, inverse ETF, we see that the results quickly diverge. At the end of the first day, the ETF has lost $23, and so the account value is $77. But at the end of that first day, the ETF internally rebalances its exposure so that it has short the market $77. Then when the market goes up on the second day, I'm sorry, it goes down the second day by 20%, that means that the short position will have decreased by $15.40, and the market value of the account increases, or of this inverse ETF increases to $92.40. At the end of the At the end of the five-day period in column F, you can see that this inverse ETF is worth $81.83 instead of the $100 or $99.99 that a traditional short position would be worth. That difference, the difference between $99.99 and $81.83 is as a result of the daily rebalancing that the inverse ETF does that the uh, traditional short position would not typically do. You can see if you compare columns E and columns F, uh, similar comparison when you compare a leveraged investment in the stock market, that's column E, and the three times levered ETF, which is column G. Interestingly, you can see that an unlevered securities account, a short market account, and a leverage, three times leveraged account, all end up being worth $100 at the end of the five-day period. But both the inverse ETF and the three times leveraged ETF lose substantial amounts during this five-day period, even though the market is flat. We can see that on a larger scale when we look at actual example leveraged and inverse ETFs. This graph on the left is the financial services leveraged and inverse leveraged ETF tracking the Russell 1000 financial services index. You can see that the financial services index in green is up slightly between 2008 and 2010. So the three times leveraged ETF should be up and the inverse ETF should be down some but what you see here is that the blue line, which is the three times leveraged ETF, rather than being up 30 or 40 percent, has actually lost about 80 percent of its value. And the line in red, which reflects the value of the three times inverse ETF, has lost over 95 percent of its value. These losses are largely as a result of the daily rebalancing um, that's done in a leveraged and inverse ETF. We've written three significant papers on leveraged ETFs, and you can find them uh, both uh, on our website and by Googling these um, titles. So in summary, we think that because of the complicated way in which leveraged and inverse ETFs rebalance their portfolios on a daily basis, and because of their use of derivatives, Investors should not purchase leveraged inverse ETFs unless they're going to be held for extremely short periods of time. If they're going to be held for longer periods of time than a few days or perhaps a week or two, investors are likely to suffer significant losses that are unrelated to the 
movements in the value of the underlying index. Thank you.